She is the author of the book, Asian Girl in a Southern World, and co-author of the cookbook, The New Filipino Kitchen. But before I welcome her to our show, I would like to remind everybody to please click on the subscribe button and the bell button so you get notification every time a new video is released. Hello everyone, this is Margie Bruce here at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, you need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest this week, Delina Pinavente. Hi Delina. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I've been looking forward to it for, you know, the past few weeks that we've gotten to know one another. So it's really great to, to finally, uh, you know, be here and to be doing this. So thank you. Same here. Same here. Thank you. So let's start with where were you born and raised? I was born in Northwest Tennessee in a town called Union City, Tennessee, and I was raised in an even smaller town than Union City, Tennessee called Troy, Tennessee, and it's in the northwest corner of the state. It's really close to the Kentucky border. It's about two and a half hours north of Memphis and about three and a half hours west of Nashville. It's up in the the uppity, tippity, top left corner of Tennessee. And if you don't mind my saying so, I can hear a little bit of Southern twang. <laughs> yes, I, I've never been able to get rid of it. And I've really learned to embrace it. And it's, um, it's helped me a lot in life, actually. So I've, you know, as, as we progress in life, we start to find things about ourselves that we really love. And what it used to be something that my college professor said, you have to get rid of your Southern accent if you, if you want a major platform. And there was actually a class in college that was mandatory for me to take to get rid of my Southern accent. And it's just interesting how times have changed because it really has been one of the greatest things, um, you know, kind of in my toolbox to help me get my foot in the door and to help me make uh, an impression on people and to be able to, to communicate messages that are really important for the day. And so I, I would never get rid of it now. I love it. And I love it. So I'm glad that you're keeping it. <laughs> Thank you. So now you are in California. What brought you there? Well, like I said, I was from a really small town and there, there wasn't a lot of jobs there. Uh, Troy, Tennessee is very, very small. It's not even a thousand people. There's no fast food. There's no grocery store. You had to drive, you know, 10, 15 miles to even find anything like that. And after college, I just felt like I could do um, big things. And I just wanted to give it a shot. And so that was back in the days of monster.com. Do you remember when we all used to put our resumes on monster.com? And I just threw mine on there. And I said, well, maybe somebody in California would be interested in me. And I got a hit and I did a phone interview. And um, then they invited me out to LA to do an in-person interview. And they hired me on the spot. And it, it's a, a great company. And that was my goodness, 15 years ago. And I still work for them today. So I, I went to, to California, I came to California just because I, I wanted something exciting to do for work. And um, my, my job offered me the opportunity to do that. And I just ended up staying. You are the author of the book, Asian Girl in a Southern World. What is this book all about? It's about explaining why you see right now a Filipino lady with a Southern accent because everywhere I go in California, everybody's like, okay, why do you sound that way? Where did you get this accent? And, you know, growing up in Tennessee, it was the other way around. It was, why do you look this way? Why do you look like this? Where are you from? And so I wrote the book to, as my explanation of, you know, how I came into the world and what it's like to be a mix of Filipino being in the South and being raised in the South. And it, it's just, it's been really great. I, I had no idea people would be so interested in 
why a Filipino person has a Southern accent, but there's a lot of curiosity that surrounds it. And of course, Filipinos and Southern people, we, we love our food, right? So there it's also, there's recipes folded in as well, because it's just uh, cooking and food, you know, it's, it's just done so much for me in terms of being able to explain to people where I'm from on both sides of the story. It, it, you know, if, you know, if you're meeting with Filipinos and they haven't ever really been to the South, you can make them a really great Southern meal. If you're in the South and they don't know much about Filipinos, you, you know, you make the, the Filipino spread. Food is just that way of connecting to people. And so it made a lot of sense for me to fold those recipes into the stories. Now that I'm curious, are both your parents Filipinos? My mom is Filipino and my dad is white and they met because my dad was in the Air Force and uh, my mom came to the States because her father was in the Navy and they just happened to cross paths in Arizona in a bowling alley, I think is their story. And uh, they ended up getting married in the Grand Canyon. And then they came back to Tennessee. And they've lived there now for going on, my goodness, 45, 46 years. And they've been married ever since. And, you know, I'm one of those people who's really blessed to have parents that have, you know, stuck it out and stayed together for so long. And they live in the same house I grew up in. And so, um, you know, I have a lot of those little charming qualities that um, seem to you know, kind of be dying out in American society now. We don't always get to experience that anymore um, because people just move so much and our um, country's economics require us to move around. And, you know, it, it's a different it's a different way than the generations before us. So, um, yes, I'm half Filipino, half white Caucasian American. And that's why you hear me say when I talk about myself, Filipino and Southern, because I'm trying to give credit to both sides, right? Uh, because they're both important. Our mom and dad, are, they're both important to who we are, obviously. Of course. So back to your book. How has that impacted your life, if any? Oh my goodness. It it was a game changer. It was a complete game changer. First of all, I, I didn't, I had never written a book before. And so when I started to write it, I, I knew that there was a really great purpose behind it. And I felt like there would be a place for it in the world, even if it was just in my family, even if it just my, a couple of my cousins bought it, you know, <laughs> I, I thought that they would enjoy it because my cousins always thought it was so cool to come to the, you know, middle of nowhere in Tennessee and like, whoa, you grow, you know, you're growing up here and you, you live down a gravel road and you do, you know, they just thought it was so cool to leave the big city and come visit us way out in the boonies as we call it, the boondocks. And so I thought, even if my Filipino you know, cousins buy it or my Southern cousins buy it and they get to learn more about the Filipino side, then it served its purpose. But what it really did for me was just, I mean, it's, it's almost hard to squeeze in into one answer, but it, it validated me as a writer. It validated me as someone who uh, finds the kitchen a place of comfort. It validated me in terms of feeling like I, I had a gift and a talent that I could share. And it also showed me that, you know, this experience that I've had being an interesting mix, Filipino and Southern, people all over the world relate to it, even though they may not have the same exact story. There's a piece of all of us that feels like, we're in a position that sometimes nobody can really understand. And that is where my book has really found its place. And I would have never predicted that. I would have never predicted that, you know, there's like a classroom of people in Japan bought it to study it. And I'm like, how can Japanese people relate to a Filipino growing up in the South? But they have their own reasons that they find in the book as to why they relate to it. And, um, you know, I've been featured in Writer's Digest and I've been able to go on a book tour and all of these other things that I would have never imagined I'd be able to do. But I think the way it's really impacted me most of all is the important stuff on the inside you know, the, the growth and, and um, just made really coming into my own in terms of confidence and what I have to offer and where my place is in the world. Because I think when you grow up, you know, being a Filipino with a Southern accent, you kind of 
go, God, did you mean to do this? Like, <laughs> was this an accident? There's no, there's never, you know, I always tell people there's, I'm never going to be in a room full of Filipinos with Southern accents. So when you grow up like that, you wonder where is your place in the world? You know, because there's so few people who meet the same description as you, but then, you know, through the book, uh, what you find out is, you know, the things that you felt were your greatest hindrances are actually your biggest virtues. And so for me, that's where it has changed my, my life the most and blessed me the most. Where can our viewers get your book if they want a copy? Oh, it's so many places. You can just go on the internet and search up the title or search up my name. But I first launched it on Amazon and it's on Amazon Prime. And then it ended up doing so well. All of the major book outlets across the world ended up picking it up. So it's also on walmart.com. Martha Stewart carries it on her website now. Um, Good housekeeping all of the one Barnes and Noble anywhere online you can and it's on select shelves um, in the southeast and Barnes and Noble as well and if you if you go to UC Berkeley or if you're in the Oakland area the bookstore at Berkeley on the campus carries it regularly and keeps it in stock um, and then there's a couple of other places like that but always the fastest way is online on any major uh, book retailer online recently you co-authored a cookbook, The New Filipino Kitchen, and you were part of the cookbook tour. Tell us about that. So the cookbook tour was amazing. It came in a really special time in my life. I was kind of going through a tough time in my life, and I feel like God just, you know, heard a prayer and said, I'm just going to throw this this wonderful gift to her. And when um, the the main author of the book, Jacqueline Chio Lari, um, Auntie Jackie, as we all call her, reached out to me, you know, she said, I heard about your book and you're a Filipino from the South and we don't have any representation in the new Filipino kitchen from the South. And we would really love for you to be a part of this. And I had not heard of her before. And then I did my research and I thought, wow, someone I, I think she was in New Zealand at the time. I think she lived in New Zealand is reaching out to me because they found Asian girl in the Southern world and is asking me to collaborate in this wonderful anthology with major Filipino food trailblazers. And um, I thought, well, of course I have to do it. So I submitted a, a story and a recipe she had asked me to, you know, what, what ideas would you think would be great for the book? What would you like to write? What do you think would be really great to contribute? And so I, I put some things down. I sent it over to her and I was chosen as one of 30 co-authors uh, from all over the world. And that was really the moment when I, um, like I was really established as a Filipino food person. It, it was being a considered a co-author of that book because there were big names in that book. There was uh, Christetta Comerford, who was Barack Obama's White House executive chef. And there was the food Buddha, who, I be, who became such a great friend of mine. He kind of took me under his wing and all of us really and wanted to see us do well. And sadly, he's no longer with us, but he had his own show on TLC for a while and touched you know, almost every major um, food menu in in major restaurants in some way or another, even if it's through another person. And so I was really established then. And that that tour was just so great. You know, I was kind of scared showing up and the first launch of the book when they said, come to San Francisco, we're going to have a huge book launch. Some of the other co-authors are going to be there. You're all going to speak. And I thought, oh man, I'm going to show up and they're going to be like, who is she? She doesn't belong here. You know, she has this Southern accent and she, you know, I was so afraid to show up with my own people because I grew up in the South where I never did that. Like the only people, only Filipino people I hung out with was like my family every couple of years when we could, you know, go on vacation and go see them, you know? So I thought, I had this moment where I, I showed up at the book tour and I thought they're going to think I'm not Filipino enough, you know, you know, those voices in our head, you know, that say just the craziest things to try to knock you off of your destiny. Right. And I walked in and 
um, Joe and Vanessa and all these people are in the cookbook and Alexa. I mean, they just embraced me. And I just remember, you know, I was like, I'm a grown woman. And I just started to, to tear up because I thought, wow, these are my people and they're welcoming me. You know, they want me to be a part of this. And so um, I think we had, oh man, I think it was like, 10 launches across the country in a really short amount of time. So, you know, I, I was in, I spoke at Berkeley, spoke at Google. We had two launches at Chicago. I got to go to a couple of the Soho houses, which was, you know, exclusive entry into those. And I spoke with in, in Washington, DC and Virginia, huge launch in New York. And those are all experiences that I would have never had if I hadn't have had the guts to first write Asian girl in the Southern world, which I thought, ah, nobody's going to buy this, you know? So I think it just shows how, you know, if you just follow that little tiny voice in your heart that says, you know, Hey, go ahead and go after this dream and don't be so scared. And, you know, sometimes life just rewards you and just kicks the door down and says, you know, we're going to add all these other things to, to it too, because you had the courage to do this and now you can handle something bigger. So my life has completely changed. I'm here with you because of the cookbook tour as well. Yes, that is true. <laughs> is there anything else you want our viewers to know about you? Anything else I want the viewers to know about me? I think uh, maybe something good to know about me is that I, I, I have an incredible amount of faith that there is nothing that you can go through in this world that can bring you down to the point that, you know, you have no future. And I think the reason I say that it, right now is because I've had um, some friends and because of what we've gone through in the past couple of years with COVID too, you know, I don't know if, if you're aware of this, but the suicide rate in, in the world has really, really increased. And I don't think we have enough messaging in the world about um, overcoming some really, really difficult situations and circumstances. And I don't think we have enough resources to apply to as many instances that are actually taking place. So I think what I would want people to know about me is that I've had moments when I thought, oh my gosh, it, my life is so far off track and things seem so hopeless. And I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. And um, I just want anybody out there who might be feeling like that to know that I felt like that too before. And, you know, you just keep going. If you can't hold on for another day, just try to hold on for another five minutes. If you can't do five minutes, hold on for another 30 seconds and then start over another 30 seconds because you never know. You might have this weird idea that go, okay, now I can hold on longer. Now I can write one page. Now I can write a book. And before you know it, you're going to be on a book tour too, or your version of that story. You know, that's what God had for me and what he has for you may be something else, but that is what I would say. Uh, I would like people to know about me is I just, I never gave up and you shouldn't give up either. That sounds like your message as well. Your inspiring message. Would that be, or do yes. you have any other inspiring message for our viewers besides what I, you just said? I think that that one will sum it up for today. I think that one was, uh, was specially ordained for today. That was a wonderful message. So thank you, Delina, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a joy to participate in this. And I really, um, I just want to acknowledge your effort in this space and how important it is to, to really raise each other up right now. It's such a critical time for AAPI, you know, Asian American Pacific Islanders. And I think the work you're doing is really important. Thank you for including me in it. Oh, thank you so much. That is so sweet. And thank you everyone for watching. This is Margie Bruce here at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, you need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world.